Now we're going to talk about sum and difference of sines, sum and difference cosines, and those kind of the standard subjects in trigonometry. But also we're going to look at something more interesting like sum and difference of sine and cosine or linear combination of sine and cosine for the same angle. So let's get started. And first let's talk about sum and difference of sines. We start with the formula for um, sine of sum and sine of the difference. Okay? Those formulas we derived previously. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add the formula on the top to the formula on the bottom. If we do this, we we'll find that both of them have sine u cosine v. So we're going to have two of those. Uh, but the next term, cosine u sine v, in one equation comes with plus sine and the other comes with minus sine. So they're going to cancel out. So this is what we're going to get. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to kind of rename things. We're going to call u plus v as x. And we're going to call u minus v as y. Different uh, numbers. So this is how it's going to look. And the next thing I would like to know to finish up with this formula is to kind of express u and v via x and y. So, so far I have x and y via u and v, but I want to do the opposite. So, uh, if I add x and y, I'm going to add u. It comes in both equations with the same sign. But v comes in both equations with different signs. So when I add x plus y, they're going to cancel out. So 2u will be equal to x plus y. And now if I divide by 2, I get just 1u. In a similar way, only by subtracting y from x, if I write x minus y, u is going to cancel out. But I'm going to get 2v. In this case, if I take x plus y divided by 2, I get 1v. And now I'm going to use all these formulas to rewrite this equation. And that's what I'm going to get. Okay? So I see that uh, sine of x plus sine of y is 2 times sine of x plus y over 2 times cosine x minus y over 2. Okay? Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to, instead of adding those two formulas on the top, I want to subtract. Okay? And if I do this, I'm going to get something like this. The first term in both formulas is the same. It's going to cancel out. And the second comes with opposite signs. So when you subtract, we're going to add them up. Okay? This is what I'm going to do. Again, u plus v is going to be x, u minus v is going to be y. In this case, u and v I expressed using these formulas. And this is what we're going to get. This is how sine of the difference of the signs look like. Okay? Now, next we're going to look at cosines. Again, we start with cosine of sum and cosine of difference. Um, if we add them up, this is what we're going to get. The second term and both of formulas on the top are going to cancel out. Uh, again, uh, we're going to use u plus v as x, u minus v as y. In this case, as we discussed previously, we can get u and v through x and y. You plug everything in. And we get the formula like this. In a similar way, if you subtract the second formula on the top from the first formula on the top, we're going to get this. And again, we're going to replace u and v with x and y. And this is what we're going to get. Okay? So, so far, we 
we talk about uh, sum and difference of sines and sum and difference of cosine. What if we have one sine, one cosine? What do we do? Now, uh, if you go on the internet or look at some books, this kind of formulas don't are not discussed that much. Okay? And the trick here, because there is no real good formula that combines sine and cosine. The trick here is actually to convert this sine and cosine to either two cosines or two sines. Oh, there are multiple ways to do this. This is kind of one way we discussed before. The sine x is cosine pi over 2 minus x. Cosine y is sine of pi over 2 minus y. We don't really need to use both of these formulas. We just need to pick out which one we want to use. So we can make this. If you use the first formula, we're going to have sum of cosines. If you use the second formula, we get sum of sines. Well, uh, let's use the first formula. In this case, we convert sine x to cosine pi over 2 minus x. And now we have sum of cosines. Uh, we know this formula. We just derived this. And we're just going to apply this formula. Actually, what we do here is we replace x with pi over 2 minus x. And this is what we're going to get. Okay. Now, obviously, as I said, we could have, if we don't like the product of cosines, we could have uh, converted cosine here, cosine y, into sine pi over 2 minus y. In this case, we would have two sines, okay? And we would use the formula for sum of sines. You can do that if you want. And also, if we're interested in not in plus here, but with minus, same idea. First, we convert using the formulas above, convert sine minus cosine to either sine minus sine or cosine minus cosine, and then apply formula for sine, sine, difference of sines or difference of cosines. And that's how we can handle this case. All right. Now let's consider the last example. Now we have sine and cosine. In both cases, we have same angle x, okay? And they're both multiplied by some constants, a and b. This is what some people call linear combination of sine and cosine. Now, uh, first, let's consider the case, special case, when a squared plus b squared give us 1. Okay, let's assume that's what we have. Now, if I see something like this, I immediately start thinking about trigonometry. I say, ah, oh, okay, a squared plus b squared equals to one. One thing that come to my mind, and uh, we also talked about it before, is some formula from trigonometry that we should all know. And that's cosine squared plus sine squared of the same angle. In this case, I call angle phi or phi. You, know, you can pronounce it any way you want, but cosine squared plus sine squared gives us one. And if that's, you know, in this case, what we can do, we can simply uh, uh, change the variable. We will say that A is cosine of some angle phi, B is um, sine of the same angle phi. It, it is always possible to find such an angle if a squared plus b squared equals to 1, okay? And in this case, we get our formula, our linear combination, becomes looking like this formula. And this formula is nothing more but the sine of sum of two angles, x and phi, okay? And that's it. We simplify our formula, okay? Now you can say, well, uh, okay, this is the case for a squared plus b squared equals to 1. But what if a squared plus b squared not equal to 1? It could also happen. Well, in this case, there is a trick. And the trick look like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to take and pull out square root of a squared plus b squared outside. In this case, in parentheses, we're going to have this expression. 
So now we're going to have some other coefficients, like these two coefficients, a of the square root of a squared plus b squared and b over a square root of a squared plus b squared, multiplied by sine and cosine. But the thing is, those coefficients, if you take these coefficients, square them, and add together, you will get 1. So for whatever is written in parentheses, all the things we talk about at the top applies. So what are we going to do in this case? We're going to find such an angle, let's call it a different uh, variable, let's call it C or Psi. And let's just find this Psi such that cosine of this Psi is A over square root of A squared plus B squared. And sine of the same angle of C is going to be b over square root of a squared plus b squared. And we can always find such C. And if we do that, we'll find that whatever you have in parentheses is simply cosine of C times sine x plus sine of C times cosine x. And that's a sine of x plus C. Okay? And this is what's going to happen, okay? Again, we can still simplify this, but uh, we're going to have, we get a similar formula like before, sine of the sum, but there's a multiplier that shows up in this case, all right? So now just let's uh, have an example like this. We have half times sine x plus square root of 3 over 2 times cosine x. Now, first thing to notice that if you take this half squared plus square root of 3 over 2 squared, we get 1. Okay, That's a simple case uh, we considered in the previous slide. In this case, what we need to do, we need to find such an angle phi that cosine of this angle is 1 half and sine of this angle is 3, square root of 3 over 2. But now you should tell me, well, wait a second, I know such an angle. Such an angle is 60 degrees. Or since we're doing everything in radians now, it's pi over 3. Okay? So the final answer will be that whatever expression we have is a sine of x plus pi over 3. And that's it.